What's good, y'all? It's the messenger of God here coming to draw one for y'all today. I'm going to start in Luke 12. Let's get right into it. The value of life. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people in so much that they trod or trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Okay, and amplified it says, be on your guard against the leaven, that's the ferment of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, producing unrest and violent agitation. Okay, verse two, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid, that shall not be known. Okay, nothing is so closely covered up that it will not be revealed or hidden that it will not be known. So remind y'all, in this ending times, in these last days that we're in, okay? Remind yourself that nothing will be hid, okay? Nothing will be unknown. So sometimes we always think that we can do things and get away with it. Or, you know, we can mess up or we try to, like I told you guys, if you think like you can smoke or drink or something and try to hide behind something and and think no one sees you but god sees you okay let's keep on going let's keep going therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops okay so to break it down version whatever you have spoken in the darkness shall be heard and listened to in the light and what you have whispered in people's ears and behind closed doors will be proclaimed upon housetops. That means it will be brought to the light. It will be broadcast, okay? So don't just think like you can just do something and it's just going to be, you know, put behind you in the, in the dark. You know what? Let me break something down because sometimes we get it twisted when God forgives, okay? A lot of time people think God just forgives, but he does forgive, okay? But only if you mean it. Okay, not if you continue to do wrong and you mean to do wrong. Okay, let's keep on going. All right, let the scripture reveal it. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. Okay, now he's telling you that don't be afraid of what they can do in the flesh because we have to die to the flesh daily. Okay, we already know that we can be hurt in the fleshly body but to know where you're going to know what you're seeking and what you're fighting for for the truth to get there to the kingdom okay just know that once you fight for the right things you don't have to worry about that flesh okay let's keep going verse five but i will forewarn you whom ye shall fear fear him which after he hath killed has power to cast into hell yea I say unto you, fear him. He's telling you to fear nobody but, but him, which is God. Okay? Him that has all power. Him that has the only the only key to heaven and hell and the judgment that, that's going to be put on the world at the end. He has the power to send you to heaven or to hell. So that's why he's telling you to fear him. Don't fear the devil. Don't fear anything else but God. You want to look good and you want to do right in his eyes. Okay, let's keep on going. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which hath killed the power and cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two far things? And not one of them is forgotten before God? Okay. Break it down. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And yet, not one of them is forgotten or uncared for in the presence of God. Okay? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be struck with fear or seized with alarm. You are of greater worth than many flocks of sparrows. So he's telling you, it does not matter how many, how many sparrows it is. It doesn't matter how many people it is. He knows every person that is here on earth. He knows every hair that is on your head that's why he knows everything that you're doing at all times that's why he asks us to pray without ceasing you have to keep on praying okay you cannot stop praying because you know why we tend to mess up in this fleshly world 
you know, and we got to keep on going. All right. Verse eight. Also, I say unto you, whosoever will confess me before men, him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to believe and don't be ashamed to claim God. OK, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. So if you deny him and you don't believe in him, you remember how Peter denied him three times. OK, he's telling you no matter who comes before you, no matter what they say to you, you do not ever, ever say you do not believe in God just because you are afraid. OK, you tell them that you believe in God. OK. Because he is the way, the truth, and the light. And he's the only one that can save you. The minute you deny him, he's going to do the same things. Like, oh, so now you want to call on me. But what about what about then when I, when I helped you, when I saved you? But now all of a sudden, you don't believe in me? Because you want to fit in? Because you, you're afraid of what your friends might think of you? What they might say? Let's keep going. But he that denieth me, verse 9, before a man shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but unto him that blasphemy against the holy ghost it shall not be forgiven okay break it down and everyone who makes a statement or speaks amplify a word against the son of man it will be forgiven him but he who blasphemies against the holy spirit that is whoever intentionally comes short of the reverence due to the holy spirit it will not be forgiven him for him, there is no forgiveness. So he's telling you, anyone, just think of this. Because anyone who's sitting up there thinking that they can just be forgiven for the things that they do all the time. If you're sitting up here saying that you hate him, disowning him, okay? Calling out his name and, 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 and shouting his name and, and burning Bibles and stomping the floor and, and, and you know, you saw that? You know, just speaking anything that's evil of him. You know, that, that reminds me, that plane that I saw. It reminds me, y'all, I forgot to tell you, I had a vision of three planes. Now, these three planes that I saw, I know I just jumped into this. These three planes that I saw, it was something else. Three planes they had like, um, but it was like double wing, double wing plane. So it was like, it was like a small plane, but it was like, it was like a double wing plane. Okay, and for some reason, it was kind of weird the way I saw it in a vision because it was three of them and they were flying together. It was like two like this, right? Two like this. And the one that was on top of it was upside down. And it was there. Were, there were, all three of them was flying like, OK, two here and then one in the middle. And then it was just it was one that was flying like this. And all of a sudden it just boom. It just exploded and it, and it just disappeared. But it, it was weird because the three planes were just flying around together and then one turned on his back. I don't I don't I don't know what that meant. But um, that's what I saw in the vision just because I saw that that plane go by and made me think of that. OK, that, yeah, you see the little white plane. I don't know if y'all can see it in the video, but I, I saw it and it made me think of that vision that I had. OK, let's keep on going. All right. I am in verse number. Uh, I say not rebuke in the name of Jesus. You know, there's always a distraction, but even while being distracted, always say that prayer. Like you say, you know what, Lord, protect me with your blood. Keep me covered, Lord Jesus. You know, just keep on praying on the inside because you know why? God is your strength at all times. He has all power. Okay. And whoso, verse 10, whosoever is to speak a word against the Son of Man shall be forgiven him, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. Okay? And then it says here in verse 11, and when they bring you before the synagogues and magistrates and the authorities, I'm reading the Amplified, do not be anxious beforehand how you shall re reply in defense of what you are to say. Verse 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour, in that moment, what you ought to say. So y'all, let me tell you something. This is how God fights for us, for us, okay? Let me tell you, sometimes 
you can be somewhere or and this is if you have the holy spirit okay not just not just anyone if you are a believer and you have faith and you have the holy spirit let me remind you something in that very time when you think that you are alone you think that you may not have the right words to say okay let me tell you let me tell y'all the holy spirit will give you the word he will give you the right words to say you know, it's just like being on the stage and you have a speech, right? And something that you have studied for, or even like someone who does spoken word or freestyle. Sometimes, you know, when you lose a word, you know, all of a sudden it's like you freestyle and you come up with something to put in there so that way it can keep on going, right? Well, just think of it this way. When you're doing the word, you're speaking the word, or you're going up against an enemy and you're praying, God will give you those words to say. He will give you the right. He will give you all the tools that you need. That's why he said, put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God. Okay. Because when you do that, you're protecting yourselves. Okay. You're protecting yourself. And in that time of need, in that ninth hour, he will be right there. Okay. He will give you everything you need to say. Okay. Just remember that. But hold on to your faith. Okay. Because faith is hope. Okay. Let's go down here. I'm going to read the parable. Uh, let's see. It says here, verse 13, the parable of the rich fool. Okay. I'm going to read the Amplified. Someone from the crowd said to him, Master, order my brother to divide the inheritance and share it with me. But he told him, Man, who has appointed me a judge or umpire and divider over you? And he said to him, Guard yourselves and keep free from the convetuous, the immoderate desire for wealth, the greedy, longing to have more. For a man's life does not consist in and is not derived from possessing overflowing abundance or that which is over and above his needs. Okay. Then he told him a parable saying, let's go back over here in King James Version. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow, bestow my fruits. Okay? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I'm going to explain that because I just, who hallelujah. I, I believe I just got it. Let's jump over here to... um. The Amplified Version. Let me read the breakdown, y'all. And he said, verse 18, he said, I will do this. I will pull down my storehouses and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain or produce and my goods. Okay. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good things laid up. Listen, enough for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself merrily. Verse 20. But God said unto him, okay, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Okay. Now listen to this. But God said unto him, you fool. This is the Amplified. This very night they, the messengers of God, will demand your soul of you. And all the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? You understand now? Okay, so let's go back over here. Verse 21, last verse. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So amplified. It is with the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself and is not rich in his relation to God. This is how he fares. So remind you, y'all, this is what it is. You can be rich and have so many things. Sometimes we can have so many things that we begin to hoarder, you know, things, you know, have so many things later like like this, like, you know what, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy this. And you think because you have stored all of these things, all of this, all of this food and all this stuff and say, you know what, I'm going to be ready when, when the pandemic and stuff be around. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to have plenty of food to eat. I'm going to have, you know, clothes to wear and just, just, just. You know, just just think, okay, in your mind, just all these things that you try to gather yourself to be prepared, right? But one thing you forgot to get 
And that's God. That's your relationship with him. Because you know why? In one of these chapters in the Bible, he said that when these things come, we won't be afraid. Okay? You're not going to rip and run because he said, I will feed you. Okay? You got to have that word deep on the inside. You got to have that relationship with God because that's the only way that you're going to be saved. Imagine how many people that had money and had food and had all of these things and still didn't make it. Okay, Lord bless their soul. That's why I sit up here so hard trying to tell y'all your relationship with God and the word of God. You need it to survive. Okay, you need him to survive. So no matter how many things you have laid up, that does not count towards what you need to have and that's the word of god the word of god is your power your sword your shield it's to help you fight it, that is your food that is your bread that is your water that is your everything to keep you living okay daily you need the word of god to live daily okay you have to eat the scroll you have to eat so that way that word will be down off in the inside of you okay now let's keep on going all right. I love this. Luke 12. Keep going. The teaching about anxiety. Okay, let's read it. I'm going to read the Amplified Version because I like how it breaks it down. Let's get it. And Jesus said to his disciples, dare for I tell you, do not be anxious and troubled with cares about your life as to what you will have to eat or about your body as to what you will have to wear. See, listen, for life is more than food and body more than clothes observe and consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap they have neither storehouse nor barn and yet god feeds them okay they have neither storehouse nor barn and yet god feeds them do you understand that of how much more worth are you than the birds okay if God would feed the birds because the birds are free, you know he will feed you. So therefore, that's when you got to have faith. Okay? You got to have faith and believe that God will see it through. When you don't have nothing, I know a lot of y'all out there can relate to when you didn't have nothing at all. Okay? It seems like the passion that we have always came when we didn't have nothing. When we was down to our last dime. When we was on our sick beds, okay? When we felt like, oh, we didn't feel good. When we didn't have a job. When you didn't have shoes on your feet, okay? When your husband left you. When your wife left you. When you didn't have anything at all and nobody was there for you. But who stayed with you? Who did you cry to? God. You got to keep that same passion all the way out, yo. You got to keep that 100%, okay? You can't be slipping, I told you it's just the same way as you out there in the street and you have a hustle. You think, just think that one time when you slip, that one time when you don't give it your all, guess what happens? You lose. Someone else will come in that's more hungry than you are and they will want to replace you and take your position because you got too complacent. I don't like that word, complacent. You got too comfortable with yourself. You got too comfortable with where you were that you thought just because God blessed you to get her, you made it there that you don't have to have that same hunger anymore. Who does that? Who does that? How are you winning? You think if you win a, a couple of times that it's over? How much life are you planning to live? You have to keep on living until God comes and gets you. So that means you got to keep that same energy, okay? The same energy that you have when you want to get up and go and, and handle something and do something and, and go take care of this and take care of that. That's the same energy that you got to have towards God in order to survive. You feel me? You got all that energy to do negative things, all that, that puffed up chest, that, that pride that you got to do all this other stuff. But, but where is it at when, when you need it? Where is it at when, when you're down? Because when you get knocked down, what do you got then? See, you in the flesh, you forgot you was human, right? You forgot, right? You so busy out there in these streets. You so busy doing your thing. You so busy running here, running there, that you forgot who you were. 
You forgot your sword and your shield. You forgot it. You forgot it. You forgot all about it. You got caught up. All right, let's let's keep going. Let's <laughs> let's keep going because I'm I'm telling you, I can get into it, y'all. I'm I'm telling you. Let's go. I'm gonna start at verse 26. If then you are not able to do such a little thing as that, why you are anxious and troubled with cares about the rest. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither wearily toil nor spin nor weave. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory, his splendor and magnificence was not arrayed like one of these. Okay. But if God so closed the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace. How much will he clothe you? Oh, you people of little faith. It's like, oh, you have little faith. Like you, you just don't believe it'll grow. You know, it's just like this. How do you just give up that easily? Huh? You see one thing you say, oh, you know what? It, it ain't gonna work. You give up right after you fail that one time, right after you hear that no. Do you know how many no's I've heard? You know how many doors closed on me? You know how many times people tell me I wasn't going to win a game? You know how many times I've been the underdog? I've been the underdog so many times. People have downed me so many times. People have hurt me so many times. But I still keep on walking with my head up. And that's not with pride. I'm holding it up but with humbleness and patience. Because I know God would take care of me. That's how you got to have passion. You got to know that you know. All right. <laughs> A little loud, wasn't I? But it's the truth. It's the truth. And the truth will set you free. I'm telling you. Let's keep going. Verse 29. And you do not seek by meditating and reasoning to inquire into what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious, troubled mind, unsettled, excited, worried, and in suspense. For all the pagan world is greedily seeking these things. And your father knows that you need them. He knows that. He knows that. That's why when I pray, I say, Lord, you know what? You already know what I need. You already know what I want. I'm asking you just to favor me, Lord. Favor me. Favor me, Lord. Favor me. You know what I need, what I want. Favor me, Lord. I need a mighty blessing right now. He knows that. But I asked him to favor me. I said, Lord, please give me your godly wisdom. Father God, help me to understand your words. Lord Jesus, help me to understand it so that way I can make it to heaven. Help me, God. Because you know I don't want to be here. I don't want to be left here. People think this gnashing of teeth is funny. You know, they just talk to you. They just talk to you. Oh, you know what? If you, honey, you're going to go to hell if you. No, I'm going to say you're going to go to hell. If you keep on doing what you're doing. When you going to wake up? When you going to wake up for real? When are you? Don't you understand what hell is? Forever. Torture. Forever. You think this little stuff that's going on around here on the earth is, is, is really bothering you? Huh? You really think so? Well, when it's all over and done with, what you think you're going to be able to do then when you get left behind? Huh? When it's all over, because he's going to come when you least expect it. And you don't even know what your time is. You think the end of the world is just going to be the end of the world. He can come snatch you right now. Are you ready? Are you ready to go right now? Have you been baptized? Have you been cleansed? Have you been made over? Have you gave up all that stuff you're doing? You ain't tired yet? That thing ain't got old to you? Man, let me... Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Sometimes we can just continue to keep doing the same things over and never be tired. And I'm just like this. You gotta be tired. You, you just got to. You know? You starting to look like... I'm telling you. You starting to look tired for real. You're starting to feel tired because you are. You are tired. You feel me? You keep repeating yourself. You keep doing the same things over and over again. Okay? Is it better in you? Huh? Is it getting you anywhere? Are you still doing the same old, same old? Why don't you do the same old, same old and get on your knees and pray instead of for something else? 
Okay? You worth more than that. What's wrong with y'all been and over, y'all? I'm telling you. I'm so tired of y'all. I am. I'm so tired of y'all belittling yourselves when you're better than that. Know your worth, baby. Know your worth. I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to help you the best way that I can. I'm trying my best. Let's go on. Verse 31. Only aim at and strive for and seek his kingdom. And all these things shall be supplied to you also. Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's saying that we already are rich. We already are heir to the throne. Okay? Without even putting your head up and puffing your chest out. You got to already know that you're a king and you're a queen. You got to already know. I'm telling you, that's why so many people can't walk with you. Okay? So many people can't talk with you. Okay? That's because you got to know who you are. I told you, where are those, un, those unapproachable people? Those people that people can't just approach, okay? Because you're going to feel some type of way. Because they can feel that, okay? They can feel that on you. They know, okay? They know that this is the spirit of God. They are, or some of them that, that may have the devil in them, they know they feel something, but they just can't tell you what it is. They're like, they like, mm. They like, mm. they like, what is it? Excuse me, y'all. They like, what, what is that? What, what, what is that that I feel? You know? And a lot of times people want that, you know, but they don't understand it. That's why I'm trying to tell you. That's why I'm trying to tell you right now how. You know? You got to believe, man. You got to believe in God. It ain't about, it ain't about whose church that you in. Let me, let me. Let me, I hope, I hope I got it in here. Because if I do, I promise you, I'm about to crack y'all up. Because I remember, y'all, who had who had the tambourine players in their church? Okay, I know I did. Every time we had church, you know, like. You know them ladies that always be playing them tambourines, they be playing the harp. already know what time it is i still got that tambourine from back in the day because it was not a game it was not a game if you was really having church y'all i know that was a little loud but oh well if y'all was really in church you guys know if you you can even beat that tambourine it has like two little um two little uh symbols on the side of it but if you long as you got that little padded bottom you will beat it to death won't you you will beat it to death and you know it how egg Excellent is thy name. Because I'm telling you, back in the day, you already know. Turn it over to Jesus so you can smile the rest of your day. Or, you know, oh, the perfect song with that tamarind would be like, Jesus can't work it out if love. Jesus can't work it out. Problem that I had, just can't see the break. I prayed and I prayed, Lord. Don't it be too late, but too late. Turn it over to you. Turn it over to you. Don't stop worrying about it. Turn it over to the Lord. He worked it out. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Well, y'all know I'm old, so. But anyway, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. God said you can have all of that, okay? All of it. Okay? I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. If you, just, if you just look at everything like it's just whatever... Because that's all of this material stuff. It, it's, it's whatever. Okay? Do not worry about it. Love yourself. Love yourself. It doesn't matter what you have on. It don't. Man, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I come today and I'm like, it don't matter what you got on. I will take this entire shirt off. And guess what? You will still be. You will still be the same. You, you'll still be that same person. The clothes don't make you, baby. Clothes don't make you. I'm telling you, clothes don't make you. Nothing makes you, okay? Let me tell you, as long as you got King Jesus, okay? As long as you got King Jesus, trust me, I'm telling you right now. I love y'all, and I will come out here, and I will come to talk to y'all and tell y'all the real, because you need to believe, okay? You need to believe and know who you are today. Make that change, okay? Make that change. Okay, let people know who you are. Okay, verse verse 33. Sell 
what you possess and give donations to the poor. Provide yourself with purses and handbags that do not grow old and unfailing and inexhaustible treasures in heaven, in the heavens where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. Can you imagine that? He's basically saying like, give all of that stuff up. Okay. Cause what you're going to have in heaven, you're not going to even need that. You're not going to have to worry about looking over your shoulders no more. Don't you know how good that feels to know that you ain't going to have to look over your shoulders to have to worry about somebody's trying to take your little goods or, or take what you got, all that you work for so hard for? Because Jesus loves us, y'all. I'm telling you that. All right? And I know I got some more. Man, it's, it's so much more. But I, I want to stop it, but... Man, I, let me keep on reading it. Here goes the parable of the watching servants. Verse 35. Keep your loins guard, girded. Okay, keep your loins girded about and your lights burning. See, you got you to gotta keep that fire going. Okay, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Okay, because you know he's our husband. Man, we waiting for God. Okay, that when he comes, cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately like yeah you know because when god comes you're like come on lord i've been waiting for you that's why i'll be doing that talking like come on jesus come come and get me come and get me so i won't mess up lord because i am waiting for you jesus i am and you gotta know when the lord lord knocks okay when it, it would not be something if you ain't got yourself together you you won't even know that the the lord is knocking at your door that'd be sad okay some people can have angels approach them and people approach them in a, in a Holy Spirit and you wouldn't even know it. Not unless you got the Spirit of God, you know, and if you do, you will feel that, okay? Just like I do. I can feel that. I can feel that energy up on people. I'm telling you, you, you just, you just got to know. You got to know that you know when you feel it, baby. It, it, it's just like you can't hold it in. Don't ever hold back or quench the Spirit of God. Let it be known. Let it out, baby. Let it out. Let it out. Sometimes we, you want to go somewhere and go out the top of a little mountain. You want to scream. Well, that's the same way it feels when, when Jesus is inside of you. You just feel that, that power and that passion. You know, and I know I can't let go. I won't. I won't let go because I love it. Okay. Verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily, I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them and if ye shall come in a second watch or come in a third watch and find them so blessed are those servants okay and this know that if verse 39 that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and have wait and not have suffered his house to be broken through okay don't you know that if we wouldn't know when he'd come, when we'd be like sitting up there, like waiting, like, come on in here. You know, just, just imagine if this is my little piece and you have, you'd be like, okay, come on, come on. I'm waiting for you. Come, come on up in here. I dare you come up in here. Come on up in here. Because as soon as you come up in here, I'm going to dot that eye. Okay, because that, that's how it is back in the day. You already know. Come on up in here. You 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 think you got it. You think you got it, don't you? You think you could come on up here. I'm gonna, as soon as you come in here, I'm going to dot that eye. Let me stop because I got into character real fast. Okay, let's keep going. But that's the truth. That's the truth. That's why you are not going to know when God comes. Because he, you know, it's just like this. Don't you think if we all knew when God comes, I told you, you'd be trying to mess up and do all this kind of stuff. You know, what? Well, this is my last time. I might as well get my last thing going on before he comes. Because I know since he's going to come tomorrow about uh, 12 o'clock, I might as well go ahead and turn up and, and go ahead and, and wait. Who? Who I always wanted to be with. Yeah, let me go over there and dip into this. And then uh, and he, he going to come at, uh, he going to come at 12. Okay. By the time he come, I'll be, I'll be ready. I'll be done praying, you know, ask God to forgive me. And then right before he come, I, I'll be ready to go on right on up. That's not how it is. He, he don't want that to be like that. He wants you to practice right now. Perfect, uh, practice, excuse me, practice being perfect right now. Okay. That's why he tells you that. Verse 30, uh, verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. I'm, I'm telling y'all. Then Peter said to him, Lord, speaketh thou this parable unto us or even to all. He's talking to all of us, Peter. 
He's going, are, are you just talking to us or to everybody? He's talking to all of us, okay? Verse 42, and the Lord said, who then is that faithful and, and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of the meat in due season, okay? Like, who can you trust? That you know that's gonna be that can be over the household that's gonna hold it down that you know that's gonna that's gonna uh, lead people to go the right way okay just like over these churches who can we believe who can we leave in charge to know that we can trust okay who can we have to lead the people to know that we can trust and count on to do the right thing you know that's why I said you want to make sure you marry that right that uh, right wife that uh, right husband so that way you know that he's gonna lead you or she's gonna lead you to do the right things because otherwise she's gonna help you go where what, what, what i always tell you gonna help you go straight to hell baby bust it wide open okay burning burning you ain't shivering because you cold you shaking because you hot and it hurts okay it's gonna hurt you oh it is i told you Right when you get ready to go, mm -mm. don't be turning around. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is hurt. This is so hot. No, you knew it was. Everybody told you, and you knew it. You, you already knew about hell, but you didn't care. Oh, it ain't, it's just a little bit of hell. It ain't going to hurt. Oh, okay. 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 We'll, we'll see. And, and don't think you can kill yourself and, and get away from it because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're going to be trying to hang yourself. You're going to be trying to do so many things. It's not going to work. Okay, you're going to have to still endure it, okay? We will bring you right back just so you can have to be done dealing with the torture. that you, Whoever that you try to torture and whoever that you try to do stuff to. See, that's why, they, that's why the word tells you they can kill this flesh, okay? We're not invincible, okay? But we do have the spirit of God in us so that way we can let you know that no matter what you do to this flesh right here, you can't do nothing to my soul. Okay, because my soul belongs to God. Okay, so y'all, we might go through everything. We just like the bully, you know. You fall down, you get you get back up. You remember when you was little, you used to fall down, and and when you try to catch yourself, you skin your little hand on the pavement, or or you get the you fall over off your bike, you get skinned up on your little arm, or hurt your little leg and stuff. But you try to get right back up. You you cry, but you get up. Okay, little baby be crying. <laughs> Mama, my daddy. Yeah, but you're going to get back up. And then what you're going to do? You're going to go right back out there again and try again on that little bike or, or whatever little toy you're going to play with. Because you know why? You're stronger than that. You just got to believe in yourself. I'll be trying to tell y'all, trying to help y'all out over here. Okay, let's keep going. Where am I at now? Because I love this. Blessed is, okay, we're going to we go, because Peter was like, is this all of us? Yeah, yes, or everybody. Okay, let's go. 43. Blessed is the servant whom... His Lord, when he come and shall find so doing, verse 44, of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord de delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the man's servants and maintenance and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in the day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and will appoint him and will appoint him his position with the unbelievers. Okay. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. You hear that? Y'all? But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whom soever much is given. Okay. Of, of him shall be much required and to whom men have committed much of him that will ask the more. So just remember that <sighs> to whom much is given. If God bless you with all of these things, okay? If God give you all of these things, all of this faith, this word, these the preachers, come on, y'all, these preachers, these, these people that the missionaries, the evangelists, all these people with all these titles. If God gives you the word, no matter who you are, if he's blessing you right now, if he woke you up this morning, that's called much is given. You think just because you got a title that, that you're the only person got much? No, all of us have. That's what all of us need to, to know this, okay? You got to know. If you woke up this morning with your life, health, and strength, if you was able to pay your rent, if you was able to go down the street and with two legs, okay, and two arms, just you see it right now through two eyes, you know, that's much is given. Your whole life, health, and strength, 
okay that's much is given so therefore how is it that bad to give god back your soul your life your everything okay he just asked you to believe and have faith in him and to turn from your wicked ways and you can't do that okay because those who keep doing wrong that's why he's telling you're going to be punished but for those who do wrong but mistakenly do wrong not on purpose but mistakenly do wrong and, and don't mean to do wrong you know you know god will he will he will look at that but he know that you didn't mean that. He knows a lot of times when we do stuff, we didn't mean it. He know a lot of times people make us mad. People try to do it on purpose. I'm telling you. I put it in my song. Imagine when you at church and, and people are shouting and somebody got, you know, you ushering your whole nice circle and somebody got them, them missionary heels on. They got them heels and you know that little heel hurt and stomp on your foot. That mess hurt. And I'm, I'm telling you. But, but do you know what? Do you give up? No, you don't. Okay? You keep on going. Okay? You keep on going. Don't stop, okay? Take a bow, Mrs. Powers. You have rewritten the alma mater. Okay. Jesus, the divider. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. Verse 49. Um, it's, This one's called Jesus, the divider. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But if I have a baptism to baptize with and how I am straightened till it is accomplished. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one household. Three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father and the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother and the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Okay? What y'all need to understand? Whew. This is what I just got from that. I feel like what we all need to do is have our relationship with God. Because if not, we are going to be divided. We're going to be divided by the spirit. You understand? How will we be able to get along if we're not all on one accord? That's period. Okay? That's period. Sometimes God divides us up to see how much love each one of us have for him. Okay? So how do you think you're going to have a relationship with him if you can't even have one with your, your mother, your, your father, your brother, your sister, your, your whoever your family is or anybody? If you can't have one with him, how you expect to have any kind of relationship with anyone if you don't have one with him? Because it won't work. Trust me, it won't work. Okay? Let's keep on going. Keep on going. Last but not least. Interpreting the present time. Verse 54. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway, ye say, there cometh a shower. And so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not discern this time? Okay. Ye and yea, and why even of yourself judge ye not what is right? It's just like this. It's like, oh, you can call all these other times. You can call all these other things, right? You 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 know how some people say, oh, you got it. You can call it. You know, you, you see all these other times. But then when you do, wait, 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 wait. It's fun. Let me keep reading. Let me read it. Finish reading the whole thing because I'm almost done. When thou goest with thine adversary, the... Mag magistrate and thou art in the way give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him lest he held thee to the judge and the judge delivered thee to the officer and the officer cast thee into the prison i tell thee thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might so it's just like this you know it's something how people can always that's why i told you, you know you little weather lady and and whoever that you got the news and the people tell the news tell us that tell you what's going on and everything like that. But if God comes without a warning. And he showed you something in the sky. He's like why you can't believe it. Why you can't believe it when you see it. Because I told you it was going to happen. It's just like he's when he get ready to come. He'll show you, the, he'll show you all these warnings. And all these things. To show you you can't predict him. Okay. 
He wants you to know that I am God. So when he put these things before you in the sky, in the sea, from the east to the west, from the north to the south, he show you these things, okay? Because he's showing you that I can do whatever I want to whenever I please, okay? And you can't call it, okay? Because you're not me. Do you understand that? And then he tells you at the end, okay? Unless you are a judge and unless you are a person who have done wrong, okay? Then you can be judged, okay? And if you have done wrong, you will have to pay your time for it. Every last minute, whatever you have done wrong, you're going to have to pay for that, okay? I just wanted to share that with y'all, okay? That was it. It Was that so hard? No. It's just like telling stories. All, all of these are, are reproof of stories for your life. Sometimes people don't think that, that you can, like, um, relate to these things in life but you can it's if you have somebody who can tell you the, the the truth and tell you the right thing about it and without you have to feel like oh man i'm gonna have to go to such and such church on sunday you know such and such was sitting over here and i know she was over here talking my whole head off or 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 brother so-and-so you know he talking to me he's gonna probably try to invite me to come to church on sunday and you know what i ain't ready to go yet but let me tell you this without such and such and so and so telling you what you're doing wrong and what you need to do know that for yourself okay you don't have to have somebody tell you, you ain't no little kid and if you are you know may the lord bless you because when you get old enough you know to know right from wrong i hope you know to do i hope you got parents or somebody to tell you the right things to do okay or lead you the right way to go if not let me tell you i'm telling you right now don't wait for somebody to try to tell you when to do right or how to do right I love y'all, and if nobody told you, if no one told you that you was beautiful today, let me tell you that you're beautiful just the way that you are, and I love y'all. I, I really do. I love you. I love you so much. You know what? And I wish I could hug all of y'all. If I can hug you, I will give you the biggest hug that Jesus will give you. I will hug you just like Jesus would. I will love you just like Jesus would. And you know what? I hope you have faith in Jesus and believe that he loves you. Just know if I can make it out, you can make it out. Because there's so many things I've told you I've been through. And I'm glad that I made it out. I'm glad that I'm sober. I'm glad that I'm celibate. I'm glad that I just have the the, the strength and the, the, the blood of Jesus in me and in my heart to cover me. I thank the Lord because we go through so many things, but sometimes we do not know how to recover from them. And the only way you can recover from something that you don't want to do or something that you're going through, remind yourself the only way to get through that is by having Jesus, that relationship with him. I love y'all. Y'all take care and I'll talk to you later. All right. Later.